Welcome to another Juicy Gossip and it's Yappy Hour today. We thought we'd dedicate a whole hour to our furry friends and their owners. So welcome all. We're also talking to Lauren Simon from The Real Housewives of Cheshire about her doggy yeah. merchandise business. Um, we'll be asking questions and listening to some great tips from our guest expert, who is Joe Wilson. So welcome everybody. Yeah. It's so Hi. great to see so many people. I don't think we've ever had this many on the show before. So I'm just going to run through, correct me, I forget the names wrong on the dogs. <laughs> uh, so we've got Lauren with Pixie and Sky. We've got Joe with Teddy Fury, Noodles and Effie Eggnog. Um, this is my Teddy here, who is a Zoom boy. And behind me, these are my dogs that have left me now. It's one of my wonderful uh, Cavaliers there, Bo. Um, we've also got Donna with Jack, so welcome. Katie with Ernie, little puppy of 10 weeks. I'm sure we'll see him later. Um, we've got Nicola with Matilda, and I can't say, you say it, Nicola. Sosia. 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 <laughs> and uh, we also have- Have you not got a list? <laughs> uh, we've also got Coffee. Mabel here. Let, let's see Mabel. Hi there, Mabel. And we've got Kerry, who is from TV's Faking It. Um, she's also a psychologist and she's with Humphrey and Captain. Who's the psychologist? Who's the psychologist? Kerry. Uh, Kerry. Kerry. Uh, from beautiful, Faking gorgeous doggy. Oh. I know. So what a fantastic lot of names. Not you guys though, just the dogs. So what we're gonna do is I just really want to ask you, um, if we bring Lauren in, why did you call your dogs those names? Oh, well, I'll, I'll start with that one. Um, obviously I've got two, well, I've got two gorgeous little girls. One's, well, she's now 17 and the other one's 14. So they wanted the Pomeranian. I actually wanted to buy, um, not buy, I wanted to um, to get a, a dog that was that didn't have a home. And they were dead set on having a Pomeranian and they wanted to call it Moccacino. And there was no way I was walking to the field calling the dog <laughs> Moccacino. Um, so I said, right, now come up with the next name, whatever's next you can have. And they came up with Pixie the Fairy. So Pixie is actually in a mood today because she's done quite a lot. She's done too much work um, and she's been taking photos. So that's where Pixie came from. She's a fairy. Oh, that is amazing. And what about you, Kerry? Because that's a really unusual name, actually, isn't it? Well, do you know what? It just suited him. He came from Russia. He came all the way from Russia. So he barks with a Russian accent. And when he came, he was just... He was just like a little furry potato with eyes. So I want to hear him bark. <laughs> if he barks with a Russian really accent. Bark, to be honest, I've not heard him bark. I don't know what that sounds like. It's more of a squeak. It's more of a squeak. Me, yeah. All right. I'll see if we can, uh, we can get a bark out of him. If I sing him, I bark. And he was a fur potato. And I thought, well, I'll call him Captain Fur Potato. Because that makes it sound as if he's going to have an exciting life. And I want him to have an exciting life. Oh, that's amazing. I absolutely love that. <laughs> and and what about Nicola? You've got you've got an unusual name there too. So how did that come about? Well, Matilda May, the well, she's gone off camera there. I wanted a lovely name that suited her face. She's a border terror, she's got a lovely squashed up old looking face of Matilda May, but you're no more interested in social Sophia, I can tell. So this is social Sophia. And I used to work for this, this beautiful little girl. And I remember this girl waltzing in for an interview and she said her name was Sosha. And I said, what? Sosha. I said, how do you spell Sosha? She said, everyone asks that. And I thought, yeah. right, that's the name I want for my dog. I want a name that people can't pronounce. <laughs> and people will say, how do you spell that name? Because then they'll remember her. Everyone forgets Matilda, but you can't forget Sosha. No that's way. Why. Yeah, I've never heard of it, actually, to be honest. Um, well, there's human Sosha and there's doggy Sosha. So oh, okay. There's only one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Katie, now Katie's got a 10 week old puppy um, and she's called him Ernie. So, what, 
Oh. Me too, call him Ernie. Uh, well, this is Ernie. I hope you can see him now. He's, uh, he's just been a little bit sorry for himself after having his injection today. Um, but I've always loved dogs with kind of like what I would say old man names and you know kind of just like really sweet and um and when I saw him when um I spoke to the breeder and she was sending me some pictures it just really seemed to suit his little face at the time so yeah um and, and actually it kind of turned out that it was fake because her father was called Ernie and he passed away um so we kind of felt like we were meant to be and that that was the match that was uh, right for us so this is little Ernie uh, or Ernie Bobs or Ernie Pods as he gets called quite regularly <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's lovely actually isn't he I love he those a- my family used to have those um, my mum and dad I was brought up with Dachshunds and what's about Mabel where did that name come from <laughs> well a bit like Kate it's an old lady name isn't it so yeah. we had a list of old lady names and obviously you have to consult the whole family and Mabel was the one that we all agreed on oh so it's lovely yeah, she is a bit like an old lady. She reminds me of my mom who's passed away. She sort of has those characteristics. And it it suits her, to be perfectly honest, as well. I think um, so. Sorry, yeah, really. very much it so. Yeah. So why well, let's go to um let's go to who can we ask? Katie. So because obviously you've just bought this puppy. Um yeah. What made you pick that particular breed and why a dog over a cat? Um, so I, I don't mean to offend anybody, but cats are not my cup of tea. Um, I'm allergic to them, which doesn't help. But I've also got this fear that they're a little bit evil because they just seem to want to like scratch you and like poke you all the yeah. time. Um, and I just think dogs are so loyal. They're so loving. Um, and, and really, as, as I kind of got older and my husband's away quite a lot with work and I'm working at home now following COVID. So I just really wanted a lovely little companion that was going to be, you know, there at night and somebody to sit and watch telly with. Um, so yeah. in terms of the breed, we wanted us, or I particularly wanted a small breed. Um, and I've never had a dog before. This is my first puppy um, at the ripe old age of nearly 40. So um, he, I've got a lot to learn, but I just wanted somebody that was really cute and uh, really sweet. And I love the way his ears flap in the wind oh, when he's gorgeous. running. So yeah. Um, yeah, so and I just think they're so full of character. Dashens are just so so they full are. of character. They are all dogs, um, yeah. but I just think because they're little. Um, obviously, they're they um, they were hunting dogs previously. They they kind of used to go rabbiting and badgering, so they're full of personality, um, which is why I chose him. And then when I saw him, I just fell in love with him. So and there was very no other option. Fashion right now again they've come back round in fashion somehow and yeah they're all over merchandise at the minute aren't they and things so absolutely yeah yeah they're, they're amazing um <laughs> and what about yourself lauren what it was it just purely on i know you said your story before that you wanted to go and get maybe from a dog's home but why yeah, did you pick that particular breed well, I, I've always grown up with boxer dogs or big dogs. We had um, an old English sheep dog. Um, so I do like big dogs, but yeah. my kids wanted a Pomeranian. Um, I, I don't know, that. I think they just wanted a tiny little dog that they could carry and take yeah. around. And they've definitely got that. She really is in a mood today. Look, she's waving a um oh. she's had a photo shoot she looks proud. Oh, so Rumpy. cute um but i have to be honest she is i mean um you were saying about watching tv kate she's such a good girl and you know she's she sleeps with us she hugs us and uh she doesn't talk so she's perfect <laughs> <laughs> it's great yeah, isn't it? you, they really are and and you come home and you even when they're little dogs you do notice that the home feels empty when they're not there absolutely and i just think that they make a home yeah my ex-husband didn't like dogs so we had a rabbit first and that was just a waste of time but whereas although i wouldn't harm a cat i didn't warm to them but dogs are amazing yeah. they are and being with the therapy dogs today seeing what they do they take them into hospitals and um, they take them into libraries and and schools where if a kid's not doing well at school they, they go and they play with the dog and and yeah and then they feel happy and uh dogs do animals make you happy but dogs specifically yeah. they warm yeah. your heart don't they don't they just and I mean they're part of the family I don't care what anyone says you know um people can look at you quite strange but it's usually those ones that haven't got the dogs 
or at all like really pets at all um never so, trust a man yeah. that doesn't like dogs <laughs> <laughs> and it's like I know I treat mine like a human um but how far do you take it so let's talk to Donna do, do you treat your dog like he's human um, a little bit but in maybe in more of a trying to create a few boundaries because he would run rampage around the house so I've got baby gates everywhere oh, wow. okay <laughs> he was just, as a puppy obviously cocker spaniels are so energetic aren't they? yeah. they're literally yeah. like no off button no off but so it was to more like when he came in with muddy paws he could like he wouldn't make it into the living room I mean the back of the sofa is all chewed and I'm like you know he's my little sofa buddy like literally when I sit on the sofa I have my sofa buddy so he's definitely human like that he always loves yeah. being next to the sofa but baby gates I never thought I'd be having baby gates my son's 11 I've now got baby gates all over my house yeah but it um, helps it helps keep you sane you know um yeah I know yeah. I treat mine like he's human. I talk to him and everything. And I, yeah, I just wish yeah. sometimes he would talk back. It'd be great. But um, what about yourself, Kerry? Do you treat yours like they're human? Talk to them as though they're human. And yeah. I do think that they understand everything that I say. And as you can see, jumpers, that's where I really fall down. This dog has got a bigger wardrobe than most humans. <laughs> <laughs> so I do kind of fall down there but I don't carry him around a great deal you know he's got legs and he can walk and yeah. his big brother who's a bit difficult to show you on camera but you can see the picture behind me his big brother is an eight stone chow chow bring it in oh wow, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah I used to have two chow chows yeah I'm really into big dogs so you know I think that this little one mm. thinks he's going to grow up to be a chow chow. So he does everything that his big brother does. So, you know, goes out for walks and jumps in puddles and rolls in mud and, you know, does disgusting dog things. And I think that's yeah. what they need to get to make them happy. Yeah, so absolutely. it's a bit half and half. Although I did say that I'd never have him on the bed. And that's, yeah, that's all gone out the window. He's now We've, sharing my bed. Definitely. <laughs> We've got a question about that later. I was going to actually do actually, it. Actually, can I can I interrupt that? Yeah. So so when I did when I started my dog um, product launch, the main thing for me is that my dog sleeps on the bed, yeah. and being a little girl, I used to sneak the dogs upstairs to sleep <laughs> in my bed. My oh. mum used to go out. So I created the dog perfume so that I can spray the dog and my bed and my room smells amazing. Yeah. So, so and it's been such a massive success. Oh, we'll have to look that oh, up. No, yeah. you, you don't need to have a stinky yeah, out here. Obviously I've got one here. So yeah, it's the, the perfume with my Brilliant. rose and flower. In. So yeah, so I've been spraying the dog. So my bedroom smells amazing. Um, so you don't have to have a stinky dog or a stinky <laughs> bed. <laughs> Well, we'll ask you all about that in a minute because we're we're going to actually ask you where you you know you, you all your products where they come from. So it's really great to see you back on our screens after how many years is it? A couple of years? No, 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 no. We've only not filmed for um, six months. Oh, six months. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so how have you? Uh, well, just please tell us what what you've been doing in the last couple of years, really, because. You did did you come off screen for a while while you sorted your problems and yeah and, yeah yeah my yeah. problem <laughs> my divorce <laughs> I suppose that is a problem and um, no I, I I filmed last year and the year before so it was the year before that mm. so it's a couple of years ago I took a year off um and we've just started filming this week yeah so it's series 15 which is really yeah. exciting can't believe yeah that. yeah I know it's been seven years it's, I, it's like something isn't it um yeah. so have your dogs do you think helped you through pandemic and those personal problems no I think do you know as I say I, I, I love Pixie I love dogs I love dogs and um, she's like my little friend do, does she help me through my personal problems I think that 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 that, that's a very big ask for a dog to help you through you know I mean she she's she's amazing and wonderful she hasn't helped me through my problems she's always there for me yeah um but I, I couldn't imagine life without 
her. No. Yeah. You but, can't, can you? You know. Um, and I mean, I remember my father. He, he used to go to the vet when the, when the dogs were getting older. He'd go to the vet with the dog and come back with the lead. And me and my brother would sit there crying. And then the next week, another dog would come. So, but they, they are part of your family. They're amazing. Without a doubt. Yeah. So um, tell me why you decided to set up Lauren Stone Collections and what do you offer in that range? I know we've just heard about the oh, yeah. So what happened was I did the Lauren Stone number one perfume, which was a massive success, yeah. but I only did one fragrance. So um, I am planning on making more and we've got other ranges coming out. And I was literally with a friend of mine, business, and he said, why don't we just do a dog range do you know what let's do it and it was literally sat there going let's do it and uh so we've done the i'll show you we've got this gorgeous bandana they i come on a qvc channel now so yeah so um, yeah 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 um so yeah we know it, we were on amazon um etsy it's it's just been a crux which was really exciting I mean, if you ever get the chance, girls, to go to Crufts, go when your favourite dog's on. It's unbelievable. Um, so I've got the conditioner, <laughs> the shampoo, which is amazing if they've got little dirty paws. You can just yeah. wash them. Um, and this is really good. I've got the, the feeding mat. So it's just wipeable. It's rubber. You can just oh, wipe nice. that. It sticks to the floor. That's, That's quite good. In fact... Yeah, we've got the crystal. I'm going to do some dog bowls. So that, that actually, you'll like this one. It says, John, it says champagne and caviar. Oh, yes. That's <laughs> it. And did yeah. you do clothes as well? No, I haven't done dog clothes at the moment. Um, just simply because it was the starting range yeah. to see how it's gone. And um, for me, it was more about the smell, the, you know, the perfume. And so we're looking at expanding and we've done dog toys. Um, yeah, yeah. So, it's absolutely no, brilliant. So we can yeah. find these products at laurenstonecollections.com. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so you mentioned Crufts. So I've never been. Um, I'm sure it's probably well. heaven. Um, so where is it held and is it really worth going? Yeah, it's definitely worth going. It was amazing. Um, I, I went for the weekend, so we did Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Mm. I think it's on for a week. It's in Birmingham okay. um, at the NEC. It's huge. But what was really exciting is when whatever dog that you, whichever dog you like best, they do the shows that day. So the, the, the one that actually was amazing was Doodle Cup. And you get people just going there and actually... Um, in a row, cutting their own dogs. I sound completely barking what I'm saying. There must be groomers, and then they, they walk them around. It's just, yeah. and then people pick which dog's the best. But the poodle cut for me with the big head was unbelievable. It's a work but of then, art, yeah, isn't it? It was a work of yeah. art, yeah. The Pomeranian yeah. one wasn't as, wasn't as clever in fairness. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, it, it's it's a fantastic. I thought it would be a little bit posher than it was. I thought it was more like the Queen was there. It was it, it was quite um, relaxed, oh, but gosh. really, really worth going. Oh, I definitely love to go. Yeah. Actually, um, so do you judge people if you if they don't like animals? Hundred percent. I'd never go out with a man that doesn't like animals. In fact, my ex husband didn't like animals, and probably should have listened to that. Yeah, you should have done. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, I must admit, I I do too. Um, if somebody doesn't like dogs, um, I have to say I do form an opinion quite quickly. Yeah. Um, and what about if you dated a guy and he didn't like dogs? Would you just not see him again? I've never dated a guy that doesn't like dogs. In fairness, what well, obviously I sleep with her, so. They have to sleep with that too. But what's really, and you'll, I don't know who's married or got boyfriends. So when when at my last boyfriend, she'd sleep in the middle of us both. She'd try and get like as close as she was trying. Obviously, she was trying to split us up. Yeah, yeah, that happens to us actually. Um, yeah, he, he, just so jealous. What about if anyone else is is? Uh, do they experience the same thing? 
Yeah, I think you can say goodbye to your love life, can't you, when the dog's in the bed? <laughs> Not about me sometimes. <laughs> what about um, Donna? I don't let Jack back upstairs because oh. he's a mucky little monkey. He well, rolls Jack around in mud. He rolls around in cow poo. Any poo he can find, so I'm like, you're not coming in the bed. <laughs> so it's not it's not hygienic to you. So that that's actually a question for anyone that wants to answer because I I've actually written that down. Who actually lets the dogs on the bed? Yeah, no, oh, I, I, do. I just think he would be he would yeah. be literally next to me or next to us. He loves being with the family, such yeah. a beautiful like loving boy. But he rolls around in anything. So I'm yeah. like, oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's the same with sleeping on the bed so I suppose it's the same people um I mean my daughter loves dogs but she won't have hers on the bed and she says you know if you come round or you stay um Teddy will have to stay downstairs and I'm like god are you joking me and she's like no oh, I'll have to send her a perfume and then everyone put the dogs on the bed yeah and, um... that'd be good actually <laughs> um so has anyone got any funny stories to tell us what about dogs or life? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we need another show for that, Lauren. <laughs> life. Uh, no, for dogs, really. Is there any? Is there any sort of funny stories? They make you laugh every day, day. Dogs, don't they? Yeah. They make you laugh every day with something or other. I think I do um, a lot of a lot of TV work. So I've started taking uh, Captain Fur Potato with me because he's only tiny. And people are generally quite happy to see him, but he ruined an entire day of filming once because he sat underneath my chair. And at pivotal moments, he would either snore or fart really, really loudly. So eventually the makeup lady just had to take him out because he was ruining the whole thing. <laughs> I've got a question for you, Carrie. So when you go to the fields with your dog, do you actually call him Captain Fur Potato? No, I call him Furpy for short. Furpy. So yeah, because Captain Fur Potato, it's just too much of a, a mouthful. But if I go to the vets, that's what they call, you know, Captain <laughs> Fur Potato, and everybody remembers it. Yeah. Name. Oh, you couldn't forget <laughs> that one, Kerry. No, no way. No. It suits him. It suits him. So, yeah, yeah. he's beautiful. It, and he is do your, do in the house, do your rules change? So, if you've got a rule, do you actually stick to it with your dogs or do you? actually just change it because they melt your heart uh, anybody i know I'm, i do I'm quite strict because yeah i've always had big dogs so i've got an eight stone chow chow and i used to have two chow chows so i downsized with captain fur potato so you've got you've got to have rules and you've got to have yeah. boundaries you can't have an eight stone beast running wild <laughs> But having no. said that, I think dogs just naturally want to please you anyway, don't they? And I, I think so. I have relaxed things. I said that I would never have a dog upstairs, and then they came upstairs. I said I'd never have a dog on the bed, and now they're on the bed. And then I said yeah. I wouldn't have a dog under the duvet, and now he's under the duvet. So it just kind of... <laughs> They're like children, I guess. Yeah, I must admit, I don't allow them on the bed, but not under the duvet. But this will change when I get this perfume from Lauren. Oh yeah, I'll send yeah. you one. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so I wanted to bring in Joe, Joe Wilson. Welcome, Joe. Um Hi. she's our expert um today, dog trainer. She's uh in it's actually brain and behavior, isn't it? Um psychology, um, an owner of the dog school for humans. Yeah. So I'm um, really looking forward to speaking to you. Um, what a great career. And um, what really made you choose that path? Well, I've always, always loved boxer dogs, <clears throat> like even as a small child. So as I grew up, um, I started working at the kennels when I was 14. Oh. And eventually I was like, when I grew up properly, I was going to go and have boxer dogs. And I ended up getting a rescue dog when I was 25, when I just split from the father of my children. Mm. And he was, I should never have been given that dog. Um, it was a real bizarre situation how I ended up getting him. Um, he was dangerous. Really? And I had small children, yeah. And it ended up that he didn't actually come from Boxer Rescue. I'd been scammed into to getting him. But 
25 years ago there was no internet there was no, no things you know it was like a lot of word of mouth and I was having a bad time because I'd just separated and was in a shitty rented house with two small children and now this dog which would either growl at you go for you or hide in a corner of a room and I just thought okay <laughs> what do I do now <laughs> and all the books were either with prong collars, especially with bigger dogs, big muscular athletic dogs. It was like dominance, intimidation, prong collars, um, hitting them with a stick and really being dominant with them. And like this lad had been mistreated. Like you could see his big bones when I'd got him. He was petrified of the world. And that's why I knew that's why he was having such reactions. And I thought, you ain't getting no more of that, mate. You've had a shit time. I've had a shit time. Why don't I go and find out how to help you? And so that journey took me um, on a huge learning curve of um, seven years studying brain and behaviour. And like I said, 25 years. I'm still studying now. Finding out how to communicate with dogs in a way that they understand because they don't speak English, French, German, Russian or anything else. And no. every day dogs are communicating to us and we're not listening to them. No. So it's really, it stops the, dog the humans because I train the humans how to, to train the dogs. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, is the dog still alive? No, that was 25 years ago. Oh, sorry, sorry, my first, sorry. My first rescue. Um, I've got Effie. Sorry, sorry. Effie's <laughs> my eighth boxer, so... Um, I've still kept boxes in pairs and plus I have some sometimes I have them here to stay and train and then go back or whatever but my dog school for humans is global now we've got members in Australia huge following in America Noodles has got 38,000 followers on Instagram we've got clients in Italy Germany Denmark China all over the world and it's phenomenal because everybody is learning yeah about the dog body language. Everybody is learning about the psychology of the dog. So it's not just the sit, stay, wait, come. No. And that they actually can look at the dog and know, I know what you want, mate. I know what, I know what you're telling me. And it's often normally not what people would have thought it was. No. And the confidence in the dogs are coming on phenomenally. We've got people who couldn't walk the dogs because they were, I specialize in boxes. I, I work with all breeds of dogs, but Boxes are my, just my, my they just, they've just yeah. got me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, um, but especially with boxes, because they're such a big, powerful breed, a lot of people are like, I can't even walk my dogs. Mm. And yet just even after four weeks, they're like, oh my God, I can't believe it. And it was only about three weeks ago, I got a little video of, of a, a, a new client and she said, uh, this is my mom, she's 74 walking my boxer who I couldn't take out oh wow and that was just like it just makes it all okay but the underlining thing is why I do what I do now is I keep dogs in the homes rather than them going to rescue because yes. they don't want to cope with them and it's phenomenal it's amazing I geek out on dog stuff I am so passionate about it I love it and of course I've got my own who aren't perfectly trained people are always astonished with that they're not perfectly trained because the pets yeah and they are allowed to have their own personality and tit about and ask about when they want but the polite and when I need them to they listen to me and understand what I'm saying and that's all I want in my dogs what a family story. members god yeah. so we're gonna say goodbye to Lauren in a second is there yeah. anything you want to ask Joe before you go me yes oh you know what that's an amazing story <laughs> and um for me helping abused dogs or helping um us understand our dogs is 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 a wonderful wonderful thing and uh yeah especially the bigger dogs the little ones but even the little dogs yeah it's amazing well, well maybe you two can hook up you never know there might be something yeah we do together there so yeah um, well, thank you yeah. lauren thank you so much for coming well, on thank you ladies and thank I know you for your time got and have yeah. a lovely evening. See you very nice soon. You all. Thank bye. you. Bye, bye Lauren. Everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Now I don't know how to say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to carry on here, Joe. So um, top five tips for unruly pooches, would you say? Can you help us on those? 
Well, I just did a, a top five in general ones, if that's okay. okay. So not necessarily yeah. for unruly ones, but for, for dog owners in general. Mm -hmm. If you've got a young dog or a puppy, remember the five minute per month rule for exercise. So that means, um, obviously this is breed dependent as well. You wouldn't train a Jack Russell the same way as you would a, a Great Dane or an Irish Wolfhound. But yeah. the bigger the dog, the more at risk they are of having hip dysplasia and things like that. So this is absolutely crucial, especially for big heavy dogs like bull mastiffs and things and, and your chow as well. So the five minute per month rule goes as puppies, exercise should be only five minutes per age they are at the month. So at three months old, they should be getting 15 minutes exercise a day. Yeah. Four months old, only 20 minutes exercise a day. Because if you go over this, you're putting them at risk of um, hip dysplasia, spondylosis of the spine and lots of real huge problems in for later at life. So you can't just get a puppy and let them bomb all over and that rule is not spoken about you know but it would save so much pain and discomfort in later life in your dog i've never Again, heard that before but that's a good tip for katie because she's got a puppy yeah yeah jo, is that, um can i just ask sorry is that is that for them playing in the house or is that more for walking or is that it's, them, it's more for like walking and outside right. people getting puppies and they're four months old and they're taking them up ben nevis and you're yeah. like oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what i mean it's like so it's a general rule of thumb, like I say, obviously it would be different with the breeds and the length of the legs, because if you take, you take an Irish wolfhound out who's got very long legs and you're walking at a quick pace, yeah. as opposed to a Jack Russell who's got very short legs, the Jack Russell will actually be working harder, mm -hmm. but they're built in a different way as well as opposed to a bull mastiff, but you're not even supposed to allow to walk upstairs mm -hmm. until they're at least over a year old. So it, it is pretty specific, but that's a general guide. But it's just for the exercise outside the home. Absolutely okay. let them play in the home. But obviously with your dog's got like a long spine. Yes. Yeah. It's like not allowing them to, to do things that would jerk that, you know, get them the ramp to go on the sofa. Yeah. The, 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 oh, yeah. You know, if people mm. research the breeds, they, they would know things like this. But, and this is no judgment on people. Um, People often don't research the breed that they've got, or sometimes they can't research the breed because they've got a few dogs that don't know what, 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 what it is sometimes. But if you can research your breed in order to put things in place before you get the dog, like so you're aware of the lifestyle that you're, you're committed to, because you chose the dogs, the dog don't choose to live with you. That's a great tip, yeah. Also, the other one is... Now, this is for you, for you people <laughs> um, who've got bigger dogs, mainly. Don't let your dog do things as a puppy. You don't want them to do as an adult. So if you've got like a, a, an eight kilogram puppy cuddling on your knee every night, but that puppy grows into 46 kilograms worth of dog, yeah. it's not fair. But your dog's like, well, why don't you love me anymore? Aww. Why can't I be on your knee anymore? Your dog doesn't understand that it's growing. It's just growing, yeah? And he, he's not aware, but all of a sudden he feels rejected because I used to cuddle on your knee. Now I'm not yeah. allowed to. And now it's become a problem because you can't feel your legs and you, oh. you fall over every time you stand yeah. up and things like that. So, okay. And um, things like jumping up, if your dog jumps up at people as a puppy, try and discourage that from, from the get-go. Like set yourself up for success as well mm. as your dog. So don't let your puppy do things that... I mean, obviously, you've got to be a bit, like, flexible with this. You're not going all in harsh and strict with your puppy. Like, you're never doing anything. But be be aware of, oh, if you don't want them to do it with an adult, yeah. don't let them do it as a puppy. Mm -hmm. um, again, set yourself, up, set yourself up for success and set your dog up for success. Now, the way we train in dog school for humans is not an hour set aside, standing with your dog tired and frustrated at the end of the league doing the sit stay wait and come we want life skills in there so we only train for three minutes at a time frequently and throughout your day we make mm. it so easy because if it was hard I couldn't be asked to do it let alone <laughs> let alone teach anybody else how to do it so we always do it in in sessions of when you're boiling your kettle we have a little quick training session while I'm waiting for my kettle to boil in the morning and things like that and because it's repetitive it yeah. seems naturally with your dog 
But when we do do training sessions, we want them quick, easy and fun. So this means when your dog has done what you wanted to do, you end on that high. And I'll tell you for why. We start off good and we end on a high. Yeah. Because if you're watching a film, you remember the beginning and you remember the end. You could have fell asleep in the middle, but you've still got the end. And it's the end that you go away remembering. We want our dogs going away thinking, that was amazing. I want to do it again. And it keeps them eager to come back for more. It's kind of that finale at the rock concert kind of thing. Or that like, oh my God, I want to go there again. Because it's the end you remember. Mm. As soon as your dog has done something well, don't ever be tempted to go for just one more because he's got it. I like, love to do that. That's where the shit yeah. Is yeah, that's where it just all just, it just all goes wrong. <laughs> and um, so it's, it's really tempting to go for just one more. Stop. Leave it okay. at the high. If you can't get the high, play a game and leave it there. So your dog's still left feeling good. Yeah. Yeah. So we're always we're always about boosting the confidence and setting them up for success. Okay. In multi-dog households, train separately and together. Yeah, because dogs are unique, beautifully unique individuals, and they will be learning mm -hmm. at different paces, especially if they're different breeds, different ages, or even if they're litter siblings. Don't expect them to do the same thing at the same time. Every dog is entitled to let, allow their personality to shine through. And that's, that's again, one of the things, the way I teach, it's not a one size fits all. We train yeah. owners how to adapt things specifically for their dogs. So when you're training your dogs, you train them. I've got three, they all get trained separately and then they get trained together. And it gives you that one-to-one -one, because dog training, I always say, is about toning, time, trust, and being continuous do you know what I mean yes. you've got to keep yes. a constant with them yeah um go at your dog's pace as well with any training now when I'm talking about training I'm talking about anything from you trying to teach them something new or uh, like loose lead walking and things like that you've got to go at your dog's pace you wouldn't expect a classroom full of five-year-olds all to be learning at the same rate, all to be good at the same thing, all to be doing the same thing, yet we expect and we compare ourselves to other dog owners and their dogs and our neighbours' dogs and our dogs' litter mates and, and everybody else. And if, if we just put pressure yeah. on ourselves, train the dog in front of you, not everybody else's. And only train, this is where it gets a bit controversial, <laughs> only train what you want to train with your dog. I mean, obviously it goes without saying, um, train your dog, you've got to be in control of your dog. You've got to keep them safe. You've got to keep the general public safe, other dogs safe, your dog safe. Yeah. But if your dog counter surfs, my dog counter surfs, Noodles, she's up on the counter there having a look to see what she can make. I could train that out of her easily. I don't. Why? Because it's fucking hilarious as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> it's like, well, I'm not going to train away my free entertainment. <laughs> And just because my old Aunt Mabel says that, like, you shouldn't be doing that, your dog yeah. shouldn't be doing that, like, it's, hang on, you see a dog twice a year, I live with her, train what you want, allow your dog to be your dog with all its, all the quirks as well, and don't compare yourself to other dog owners, no. yeah. Because this is where, again, where the psychology comes in, my background in brain and behaviour, it's, it's in humans as well. I used to work in the mental health field. And uh, when we start comparing ourselves to other owners, it just absolutely crushes us. And now our dogs are reading us energetically every second of the day. They don't speak the English, they, read, they learn by association, which means they are learning certain key words, yeah? Mm. and yeah. they the association by that word with that action but they don't understand the conversation what they're doing is they're reading us energetically they can sense our emotions which is why you can train dogs to sense out um diabetes and people who have seizures but when we start comparing ourselves to other people we change our energy field our dogs pick up on it and then mm. our dogs don't see us as a confident leader so they're like i'm not following you you have no idea what you're doing. doing. <laughs> Why should I listen to you? And it's not about being dominant and sticking your chest out and like walking like, you know, the big I am. 
it's it's just about being aware of how your dogs read you, how your dogs are communicating with you, yeah. and how you communicate with your dogs. So yeah, in a nutshell, basically treat your dog as your dog. And yes, you are allowed to have your dog sleep on the bed. No, it doesn't affect the behaviour at all whatsoever. I've had dogs sleep on the bed. I've had dogs not sleep on the bed. And that's a big, great debate in dog training, it isn't is. it? You should be, be here. Oh, you should be that one. them in the place. Not a bullshit. <laughs> Let your dog sleep where they want. Yeah. And I've got a couple of questions. Um, if anyone else has, please do let us know but um is it with the tone of of your voice does that make a big big difference with the dog or is massive. it more about the word massive the, the dogs don't understand the word until they make an association with this yeah and the association and i'm going to give you an example of the association you pick up your dog's lead and your dog will go happy dancing it's made an association nobody's explained to them what it is They've made an association with that lead, me going out. Yeah. With the tone, the difference is um, puppies especially like a higher pitched voice. If you've heard puppies play, it's quite in a high pitched voice. Yeah. And this is why a lot of dogs don't like men if they are a female owner's dog type of thing. Men's voices tends to be lower, gruffer, and dogs prefer female voices yeah and so but tone is definitely it and it's how you say it as well like say if, if you want your dog, if you want your dog to do something say it like you mean it don't say please sit <laughs> go on no, go on go on just sit 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 nicely just say sit yeah? yeah and it is it's about the tone but also the timing as well them two are very very interlinked definitely yeah definitely um, and my other question quickly before anyone else has got any questions is uh, our cockapoo, Teddy, he's four and um, he's not so good in the car at all. Um, very nervous. He's almost hugging the chair. Um, do we need to like get him a restraint or what, what can we do to make it more pleasurable for him in the car? Right. This is actually really, really common thing. And again, it's something that we, 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 this is the royal we, it's me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Covering the membership, I've got a whole section on it about how to introduce your dog to the car and have them travel in safely and happily. One of the yeah. things that you can do <clears throat> is literally put him in the car and not go anywhere and get back okay. out of the car. In the car, and just sit there with him, um, feed him a few treats and get back there out of the is. car so he's not making that association with whatever it is that's that's worrying him or making him feel not great he's not getting we just we just get in the car and get out the car but we do this in a lot of stages also if you have a special blanket for teddy and you wash it in a certain kind of fabric conditioner that is not anywhere within the other people's clothes or anything else in the house, so you buy your own special fragrance. Yeah. And you only wash Teddy's blanket in that, and you allow him to sleep on that, only sleep on it. So every time he goes to sleep, yeah. it's my dog to keep oh. someone at the car. <laughs> and um, so if you allow him to only have that when he goes to bed on the night, he'll associate, and also again, dogs learn by association. Yeah. He'll associate that smell with calm sleep. So then okay. you can start taking that blanket into the car, which will give the association of calm. And it's like not using any drugs or anything. Dogs' noses are hugely powerful, um, far more powerful than others. And just mind the kick off right at this moment. Well, then <laughs> um, they don't yeah. work with dogs and, and children, don't they? So. I know, and mine are trained, but they are trained to bark at the door, especially Ted, because um, basically, why have a dog and keep them quiet? Absolutely. That's you know, a really good tip then. We'll, me. Somebody we'll, else try that. Bad, so. we'll try that one. We'll take his blanket Definitely, in the car. There's, there's a lot more stages to it. Um, anxiety with travelling is, is huge oh, okay. with a lot of dogs. Adolescent dogs tend to go through a stage of where they're, they're not happy with it and they can be car sick. Some dogs grow out of it. Some dogs 
don't. It, it stays as an anxiety thing. But there are a lot of things that we can do. He's going to sleep, bless him. Look at it. I'm tickling his that. chest, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> to keep him here he's not been here much um has anyone else got any questions for joe um, I said it one. this one he looks like butter wouldn't melt in his mouth but he is a little <laughs> bit of a monster and he likes to steal my socks straight off my feet which is fine and we do we do play with each other quite roughly we like to have a little bit of a wrestle but occasionally he gets a bit too excited and a bit nippy so how should i respond to that because i don't want him thinking that he can bite me even though you've really got very big teeth oh. i would just if he, if he nips you literally stop the game well get up and walk out the room yeah just end it like he's, that he's lost he's lost like he, he can't play nip and bite if you're not there to play nip and bite with and because again dogs learn it by association he'll learn to associate oh if i do that i lose this mm. i lose the game i lose me mom I'm here by myself. You yeah. know what I mean? And then come back in a few minutes later and you can re re restart the game, providing he's not too excited still. But, um, yeah, just, just get up and, and walk out the room. So no no reward in the bad behaviour? No, no, no reward. And, and do you know what? Even telling your dog off is attention. It is, yeah. Yeah. Your dog would rather have you telling them off than being ignored. Mm. Yeah, so by like getting up and removing yourself, yeah. they've got no audience, they've got nothing to bite, they've got nothing to do, and they can't continue with that behaviour. Yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. Anyone else yeah. for questions? Nicola, have you got any questions? You've been very quiet down there. <laughs> Who go to terriers? And as you know, terriers are notoriously naughty. So they go for a walk, one is just peaches and cream and perfect. This one who's sitting here like an angel is very reactive to the point she's very unpleasant to walk and she's got a, on her lead, she's got a yellow give me space. How can I, I'm aware that I'm probably the problem because I'm getting stressed knowing she's going to react, mm. but I just can't stop her reacting. She has actually bitter the dogs as well. I, I feel she's probably protecting me. She's nine and she's not stopped and I've not corrected this behaviour. You, did you, you say do? she's nine? Did she say she's nine? Nine. Nine. Yeah, nine. Nine. Yeah. Yes, she old. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, dog reactivity, again, it, it's huge. Loose lead walking, dog reactivity recall, it, uh, the, the, the main ones that people want um, to know. But we've got to, we've got to understand why your dog does what they do. And normally when I'm working with somebody, we go quite deep. We go into the breed predatory motor patterns of the hunt, stalk, chase, kill thing. And, and all breeds have different ones of them. And sometimes your dog is reactive. Quite often your dog is reactive, not because there's any signs of regress, aggression. Um, I think I've met one aggressive dog in 25 years, but I've met like, Hundreds of owners have thought the dog's aggressive and it's not. It's a fear-based response trying to get away from the reactivity because they're, they're like, I don't want to be in this situation. And what happens when dogs are stressed, again, like humans, they've got the flight or fight, you know, scenario going on. But what happens is we have our dogs attached to a lead. We've removed their ability to flight. Right. Possibly lost connection here with Joe. We can't hear her now. It was all going so well. Are you right. back? <laughs> Frozen. We just missed the very last bit that you were saying, Joe. Sorry. I was just saying that. Um, did Did you hear about the fight or flight? Yeah, we heard that. Yeah. Semi connections unstable now. <laughs> uh, so by um, us having them on the lead, we are we are we've stopped them having this ability to flight. Yeah. And so they're only left with one option. And that is to be reactive to the other dogs in a best attempt to like, I don't want to be near you. Can you go away? And especially with Terry is that the quite, the quite, um, my son has got two Jack Russell Terriers, my grand dogs, Chomp and Aero, and two Jack Russells. 
and they, they can be quite feisty little feckers I call them <laughs> and, and it is like you know that kind of well I can't escape the situation yeah right what else can I do so again it's all about down to the dog communication we need to let our dogs know that we are their guardians we've got this for them so they don't have to do this and the training is a process so it's not an overnight thing and especially if she's nine it would take a good few months for her to understand um that she doesn't have to repeat a behavior and every behavior they do is it normally has a pattern it has a beginning and an end so her seeing a, a reactor uh, or being reactive to another dog might actually start way before you even put the lead on her to go for a walk. Like she might have been already getting herself into that set. It, it's amazing when you hear about um, the mindset of um, the, the dog psychology and the how the dog's mind works. It, it is fascinating, it. isn't it? It is. So yeah. And it's and there's the year between them, Matilda couldn't give a damn she'd walk past anything not bothered this one spots mm. it starts strutting and then it's pff, we're off <laughs> it's embarrassed and I'm, like, I'm so sorry mm. oh, yeah but look she with me she's so calm yeah um she's just a beautiful, beautiful dog but when she's on that lead it's as if she's putting on her you know her armor and she's ready to say come on i'm here let me have you terrible she's it, been like, as good as gold yeah, I mean, you wouldn't believe that. She's been as good as gold on your knee. I can't, I can't hear anyone now. <laughs> Is there any more questions, Donna? Have you got any questions for Joe? Yeah, just I'm really interested in just in the behaviour from Jack. So whenever Jack is sat near us, he always has to have a paw on you, like literally, literally. And it's beautiful because we just stroke his little paw. But what's what what's that about, Joe? What's the kind of um... you've, just said it. you've just said it. It's beautiful. It's it's a oh. <laughs> it gets attention. So hang on. Yeah. Me, look, I stop. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just answered the you just marvelous sort of asked the question and then and then said, you know, why it's literally you just, that. Yeah. Yeah. Attention. He's yeah. just like he's so always wants to be fussed yeah I'm like, tails wagging now he knows i'm talking about him Look, <laughs> and he's a beautiful but he's just so like has to have cuddles the whole time and is it just literally it's just like i want to you, you could teach him um more independence as well and that means him being happily um active doing something yeah away from you because it could be um i don't think it is a confidence issue with 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 him but with some dogs, it is a kind of like a, a needy kind of an emotional, <laughs> I don't feel safe, so I'm going to stay with you. But with him, yeah. definitely attention. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally. And you, and, you, and, you, and you say, oh. <laughs> I know. You can't help it though, can you? Because he's so no. cute. I've been doing and the same thing. I can, doing turn this, I can turn this on its head and maybe say that owners quite like the dogs being dependent on them. Yeah, I yes. mean, I'm, I'm probably not. I would because because I work at home, he spends a lot of time with me. Because yes. he's not actually my dog, he's my boyfriend's dog. So he came with the boyfriend. <laughs> Since I spend more time <laughs> with him than the boyfriend does. <laughs> um, but I think what do you make of things like lick mats? Because he's a spaniel and they like to sniff things out. And do you do you endorse things like giving him like a lick mat or a Games, Absolutely. Like I mean, I'm an absolute dogs pro dog trainer, as well as many other various qualifications as well. Um, they do work for um, a lot of breeds. Lick mats and things like with lick mats, you've got to be very you just supervise your dog because it's so easy for like I wouldn't give my boxes lick mats because like I'd be pulling plastic out the ass for the next week because they're just at this. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but you know with as long as you supervise them absolutely and yeah. you can give them things like um mine love greek yogurt in the kongs i feed mine with kongs so my dogs are actually spending 90 minutes a day eating because they get fed kongs three right. times a day and that that's a lot of time when you're, you're needing to do something on the computer but when you're doing these things with the dogs it's come come, come to freeloading and it's been scientifically proven that 
dogs would prefer to hunt and seek food yeah. than just giving it in the bowl. Yeah. Ah. With Pongs, which is like a, 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 it's a brand name of something, and I would highly recommend, even though I'm not affiliated with them, that you get the actual brand Kong yes. because they're just more reliable and safer and stronger than that. You can be filling them with, even if your dog is raw fed, you could be filling that with things like um, banana, potato, a bit of yogurt, you know, things as a treat for them. What they're actually doing while they're chewing and sucking and on biting on a calm is they are releasing self-calming chemicals into the body so they actually create calm. As well as the fact that they're doing something and while they're doing something like that, they're not barking, they're not jumping up at people, they're not chewing your kitchen, they're not like, you know, being as a dog. They're actually calming themselves down because of the actions they're doing, the look, licking, the sucking, the chewing, the suckling. They would do that as a puppy to a mother. Yeah. The dogs lick to self-calm themselves and okay. chew things in separation anxiety is a self-calming activity. They they actually doing all this and getting fed because my dogs get the kibble and the meat in the cons. Yeah. Um, they are actually self-regulating themselves. And the more your dog stays in a calm space, mm -hmm. the more it's their default mode. Oh, absolutely. So absolutely do that. Yeah. Definitely. All the snuffle yeah. mats, but supervised with snuffle mats and licky mats. Yeah. Um, well, mine mine go in the cage when I go out. The Sorry. I say, my love, my if I just want an hour's peace, I've got various snuffle mats and I just load them full of treats and sprinkles and bits and pieces. Yeah. But you do have to be careful because Humphrey did try and eat a snuffle mat once. So oh, uh, nice. I see what you're saying. You've got to, you've got to supervise them. But yeah, everything just goes quiet for an hour. I can get some work done and they're really happy at the end of it. I love them. I think they're great toys. And it's oh, mental really stimulation for them as well. So mm -hmm. walking, um, you're physically exercising your dog, which is, which is great. If you allow your dog to sniff, which is huge for them, like huge for them, because if you, how your dog's nose, right? How your dog works is your dogs are always reading the left-hand side of your face. With their noses, obviously they've got two nostrils here and they've got two slits at the side of the nose. This is where everyone now looks at the dog's nose. <laughs> and what that is, is that, that's like a filter system. So your dog will breathe in about 500 cents and breathe out 400 cents through this filter system. The next time they have a sniff, they will take in like 100 cent and breathe out, I don't know, 80 cents from this filter system. And they will sniff until they literally are just bringing in three cents, filtering out two and homing in that one cent. That takes huge brain activity and is incredibly like draining for mm -hmm. your dog's brain. So allowing your dog to sniff even on walks is, is huge. It's huge for them. And um, the thing with snuffle mats as well, it's encouraging that they came to free loading, the sniffing it out, the hunt and seeking, which is what dogs are made for. Yeah, yeah. And loose doing all things like that are brilliant. The Kongs I use, like I say, daily, simply because, and if I want to go out as well, do you know what I mean? They're like they're happy, they're entertained. And when I come back in, they're asleep because they're knackered. Yeah. So they've been mentally stimulated and the walks have physically stimulated them as well. But if you just went to the gym, and you haven't, if you've got a lot on your mind and you haven't like drained that by doing something, mm -hmm. you can still feel a bit arsy yeah. and you can actually over-exercise your dog. Which you just end up with a, a tired toddler having a tantrum, basically. And yeah. so it's about getting that balance. Balance, like, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, Joe, because what we what we experienced with Jack is the longer you exercise him, the naughtier on recall he is. We say naughty, he's just tired, like you say, he's like yeah. a little naughty toddler. But would you would you then take out the putting the food in the bowl and feed them just through the conch? Would you kind of recommend that, or would you still do a mix of the both? I still do a mix of both, and I know a lot of breeders, uh, a lot of breeders, God, a lot of trainers. <laughs> Especially now, are all like the hard in on. Stop walking your dog if your dog doesn't walk up, doesn't like walking. Stop feeding from the ball, ditch the ball. And I'm like, well, hang on, you've got to get your dog real life ready here. Yeah? Mm. If you take your dog to a kennels or they have to stay overnight in the vets, they're not going to fuck about with a con 
filling a con with apple puree and, and green yogurt for your dog, you know, and the need to still know how to eat out of a bowl. So I do a mix, I do a mix of both. Yeah. Just so, and, and I'll tell you why I did that. And it was again, <laughs> your mistakes are learning curves. I went through about a month when Ted um, was quite young of just feeding him out of Kongs just because I was busy and it was happy yeah. and I was just doing it. And one day I gave him a bowl and he just looked at me. He didn't know how to eat out that bowl because he, he was quite young and he'd forgotten. And he was like, he ended up tipping up out all over the floor <laughs> and, and just hoovering it up that way. But it, it's about how we want our dogs to be is as ready as they possibly can be is how we can possibly give them for any event you know that's yeah. going to happen and so yeah I regularly feed mine out of the bowl but the fed out the comms the majority of the time okay thank fascinating. you fascinating we could be here all night um, have, we've run right over on time it's the first show that we've done this so I just <laughs> want to thank all our furry friends uh, who have joined us and their owners today for a fantastic show I know we've learned a lot here today uh, I want to thank you Joe, for coming on and uh, giving your expert uh, opinions and, and advice um, next show we're getting a little bit more serious uh, on June the 5th we're talking titties and the nitty gritty and it's all about raising awareness for breast cancer um, but to view this show you just go to YouTube and look up Cheshire Socialites uh, there's lots of shows that if you've missed them they're all on there and this show will be available from the 1st of May so thank you once again to everybody and uh, we'll see you very soon we hope all right, bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.